to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers back with you Friday, November 20th. Another episode, gentlemen, another episode of the show. Another day, another podcast. That's right, that's right, and we are getting into the rest of the Week 11 matchups on today's episode, and reacting to last night's game as well. We have some uh, news to talk about. Oh my goodness, do we have news. What what happened yesterday at practices? And it's, even it's more ridiculous. news this morning. So, uh, you know, as we as we get into it, you can prepare yourself, uh, mm-hmm. fantasy football player. Yeah, one piece of breaking news um, is that the 12th man, they were salty from our <laughs> dancing on them a couple weeks ago <laughs> because I, I assume your guys' Twitter blew up like mine did. Uh, it was pretty much full of nothing but Seahawks fans just giving me the business, and I loved it. Yeah, it was, uh, look, I don't deserve every everything that I get, but we deserved that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. And and, and what's kind of ironic, and, and Mike, I didn't even realize you had tweeted about it. I did as well. I've never heard worse fake crowd noise than what they were piping in last <laughs> night during the game, which is the greatest disrespect to the greatest crowd in the game. Yes. It's like, well, they didn't use their 12th man software. They used some like Jacksonville audio. I don't understand what well, was going the, on. I mean, the, the problem was that uh, the, what's great about uh, like the silver lining of this, you know, no fans, crazy season is we're hearing more and more players on the field, you know, what they're, they're drawing play call switches, like really cool stuff. But the audio people last night decided that the crowd noise and the and the on the field sound needed to be the same audio channel. So when the inevitable NFL player drops a word you cannot say on network television, they they were just muting the whole thing. <laughs> and it was ridiculous, man. It was it was really, really bad production. They uh they didn't reach out to Al Borland. They didn't reach out to Judge Giamatti. They didn't Foolish uh, yeah, they, they should have. Our production quality was better than what I heard last night. And the truth is, this game disappointed for fantasy purposes. It did. Unfortunately, And, and it did. even if you had a player who produced some value, like DK Metcalf, you had moments where, look, he had a couple of drops. He had an end zone drop. His face uh, dropped 40 the ball. Pl- 40, oh, yeah, that's right. He had a 40-plus <laughs> yard reception call back. Yeah, and, and so Metcalf, okay, productive. Lockett. Uh, I think he caught nine of nine passes, productive. Had a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Drake had a touchdown. Yeah, Drake had a touchdown, but only he ran for fewer than 30 yards in this game. I think if you started Chase Edmonds, if you were forced into a flex of Chase Edmonds, you were happy getting double-digit oh, production. Be. You got to uh, be. And but then Ky- my, my, Kyler my Russell? Dude. Yeah, Kyler was Kyler was disappointing uh, it, it, because of the matchup, because of the over Hopkins over-under. as well. Yeah, but, dude, Carlos Hyde came through in a big big way and he looked he looked great and this simply if you're looking at that going well what what do we take about this just keeps my confidence high for when chris carson finally comes back which is officially next week carson is going to dominate pete carroll came out and said that uh he would be out there i'm glad i kept my mouth shut yesterday when you guys (laughs) recommended carlos hyde again you were spot on and the truth is is we found out alex collins wasn't available and it was like uh, Bo Scarborough and Carlos Hyde, you guys well, were Alex you guys Collins, were dead on all week. Collins was not available because the Seahawks didn't want him. It yeah, because is, is what happened. They had already called him up. the The rule for the NFL is you can call a player up from the practice squad uh, practice squad twice, uh, and then send them back, which is new for this year because of all the craziness. But after that, you would have to give them an actual contract to be on the active roster, and they didn't want to do it. Speaking of Bo Scarborough, did. Uh... Did either oh. of you guys have a hard time watching the Him splits? Do the splits? Yeah, that oh. was a that was a, oh, as a man groin. that has tight hamstrings. I I mean, I could <laughs> I couldn't watch that for for my body to do that. <laughs> Your legs would have shot off 
Like, yes. like a G.I. Joe explosion. 100%. My legs are completely disconnected down there. If, like the rubber bands gonna... holding the legs on just snapped and go, pew! There goes Jason's legs. That's right. <laughs> All right. It is Friday. Put Clan Friday. We're always taking care of the Foot Clan. A weekly giveaway to our supporters at jointhefoot.com. This week's item from Ooh. Pristine Auction is a... Oh, Mike just saw it. It's a signed A.J. Brown jersey. Yeah. Ho, ho. That's, that's nice. And that goes out to our winner this week, Matt Samuelson. Congratulations. You won an A.J. Brown signed jersey from pristineauction.com. <laughs> that's hot. Yeah, that's nice. So you can uh, you can check out their auctions at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS over there. We do have a, a, a few, uh, a couple of pivots, all right? We've got some changes to our start of the week uh, picks from yesterday because of new information. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to transition away from Matthew Stafford as my start of the week based on the uh, based on a couple of things. One... I still think he has the potential to have a decent week. And if, if, you, if you need to uh, put him into your lineup, you're facing the Josh Allen by your league is, you know, they fill up their bench with quarterbacks. Stafford could be okay, but Marvin Jones was limited in practice a couple times this week. Kenny Galladay, you thought maybe he could come back, but then he missed practice on Thursday. He won't have Galladay. And then on the other side of the ball, there's a lot of question marks about whether Tr- Teddy Bridgewater will be out there. In fact, we don't think he will be. So, the potential for this to be a kind of barn burner versus a running oriented game is taken down a notch. So I'm going to transition from Matthew Stafford and I'm going to go over to Big Ben Roethlisberger. He plays Jacksonville, uh, who's given up uh, over 25 fantasy points per game to the quarterback position, including top 10 performances the last three weeks. And Big Ben is uh, what the line this year is uh, cooking, right? So Big Ben's been cooking. And he has all his ingredients. All the weapons are ready to go. And he's been the number three fantasy quarterback the last uh, three weeks. I believe the line uh, on this show is eating hamburgers. And Big Ben is eating lots of them burgers. Sure looks like Big Ben's (laughs) been eating hamburgers all over the field. Yeah, so I will go with Big Ben as the pivot. And then, Mike, we got some news about your running yeah, back start it, of the week. Part of your part of your pivot for Matthew Stafford, I believe, has to be related to this as well. That yeah. DeAndre Swift... Uh, rookie sensation for the Detroit Lions at the running back position. Missed practice yesterday because of a concussion. Yeah. DeAndre Swift is not going to play this weekend. DeAndre Swift might not play next weekend it's because it's the Thursday game. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even factor that in. Like DeAndre Swift, is, I'll say this. What a bummer! You better be prepared to be without DeAndre Swift for at least a couple weeks now, which sucks because uh, the the breakout was it was happening. I'm moving over just because I want to give people a uh, a waiver wire pivot option. Maybe you're struggling at the running back position. Adrian Peterson will be the guy for the Detroit Lions. He has he has been it before. I mean, you you saw a, a couple good fantasy games for him at the beginning of the season. Jason's giving me the face because he thinks it's Carry On Johnson. Carry on my son. Don't you cry not, no more. It's it's not Carry On Johnson. <laughs> KJ will get on the field a little bit, but. With with Matt Stafford with the thumb injury, with the the wide receiver options for Detroit banged up, with Teddy Bridgewater not playing, I don't see a way that Adrian Peterson doesn't carry the ball twenty plus times. Does that turn into huge production? Maybe the matchup against Carolina says that Peterson will be a he'll be a running back too this week. He is always waiting for moments like this. He is mm-hmm. sitting around. That's projecting true. potential scenarios like this. We don't know for sure whether he was the one who gave the concussion to uh, DeAndre Swift. But <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's unfortunate because you, you, you saw sucks, Swift man. break out, and it's so good for the offense. But um, no, Peterson's going to get a ton of work, and people have asked about starting carry on. And uh, if you do, you're probably just going to watch Adrian Peterson play a lot of football. Now, would you play somebody like Peterson, or would you play Kalen Balazs, who has an opportunity this week? I would go Balazs okay. in, in that case. All right. So that concludes our pivot segment of the show. <laughs> pivot. Uh, and let's get into some news. News and notes from around the league. 
I should say maybe it concludes our pivot segment of the show because the first <laughs> bit of news we have here does tie into a stream of the week that was brought up earlier. Look, the Saints, Taysom Hill, will start Sunday against the Falcons, according to multiple mm. sources. Took mm. all of the starter reps at practice this week. Jameis Winston will be the backup. Mm. Wow. Reactions. Wow. How are you My, reacting to this news? Because I have I, lots of thoughts. I have so many thoughts. I'm, I'm blown away. I'm excited. I still don't believe it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like he's named the starter. Great. He's the starter. Wink. Um, but yeah, it's it's if you're on ESPN, congratulations for your free win. Having uh, a, a super flex in a non super flex league. If you were able to grab Taysom Hill and throw him in your tight end spot or your your flex, um, I, I'm going to take the under on the game as I expect this to be a Tim Tebow offense. If Taysom Hill is out there, a lot of uh, running and um, clock moving type of type of football. Yeah, it's it's uh, something to be discussed. I understand why you said I don't believe it because, you know, for all we know, this could be something that during the game there's some transition to Jameis Winston snaps. I am more inclined to believe it based on him taking starter reps at practice than I would be if it was just a an arbitrary call. And we joke about coaches, the gamesmanship of, ooh, who's going to be my starting quarterback? And And here's the truth. It really does matter between these two players. Keeping that on lockdown is an advantage when you have a fully rushing-oriented quarterback versus a passing quarterback as opposed to two mediocre passers like the trubisky Foles type of hidden agenda. But uh, look, Taysom Hill does not have to be a great NFL quarterback to be a great fantasy producer for your team this week. Correct. That is the thing that Tim Tebow taught us. Uh, he has a whole chapter in the book of fantasy football about that. You guys have brought it up many times. Uh, Taysom Hill, I went back to try to watch passing highlights at BYU <laughs> <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times I was like, oh, this one's a pass. And he put his arm back to throw and it would turn into a 64 yard run. So there weren't passing highlights. He did throw the ball a thousand times in college. He did complete 60 percent of his passes, but we haven't seen it at the professional level yet. And if you pay a guy 21 million dollars like the Saints did. It's a good idea to see what you have in him. I mean, let him throw the football a little bit to see if this is your future, because there's no guarantee Jameis is a better option for the future. Neither could be your future if you're New Orleans. Yeah, the yeah. it's it's tough. This is a very tough situation. Uh, I agree with Andy that it, like Peyton paid Taysom Hill at the time. Uh, I think everyone outside of Sean Payton and the the Saints thought it was stupid to give a gadget player who's not even your backup quarterback that much money. Let's see what he can do. Uh, my question for you guys is what do you do with the what do you do with the options? Like yeah. Michael Thomas. What do you do with Jared Cook? Like you you go from being really excited. Michael Thomas is finally back. My first round pick. He's through his injury here. The matchup is is fine for for Michael Thomas. But now you cannot possibly be excited, Jason. Talk talk me into Michael Thomas. I can't talk you into it other than saying Michael Thomas is a world-class, one of the best wide receivers in the league, and he should be the number one target in the offense, and, and he'll have a good target market share, a good share of the yardage. But I expect all those things to be down. I expect the targets to be down, the yardage to be down. So I'm, I'm still starting Michael Thomas, but I'm certainly disappointed um, that the quarterback is going to be Taysom Hill. I do wonder who the deep threat's going to be because if this is a run, 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 you know, it's it's going to be a lot like what you saw. Or I, I think what Peyton is going for is what you saw last year from Baltimore, where, I mean, if you between your quarterback and your running backs, if you're running, you know, 60, 70 percent of the time, um, including quarterback rushes, the defense comes up and you you bomb over the top. Uh, but you can, you just can't take a shot having never seen what we have no no idea what to expect other than you know hypothesis right now for a Taysom Hill led Saints. Yeah, and I I would be actually more inclined to be you know Thomas I'd play because he's close to the line of scrimmage, sure handed separation, high percentage throws. I don't think Peyton wants to make mistakes with this. I think that's part of the decision here. Is he saw some of Winston last week, took sacks, uh, inter, you know interception. Some mistakes took place, and I know I know Taysom Hill has said some fumbling issues in his limited reps, but I do think that they're going to try to put him in a position to, uh, you know, just not ruin things for this defense that's been better. 
And uh, that includes easy, high percentage throws to Alvin Kamara and to Michael Thomas. So I'm excited to see it. Like you said, Jason, at the top, yeah. it's going to be uh, fun to watch. Also, Alvin Kamara did not practice Thursday with uh, a foot problem. That's true. You know, but that's, he said he that's was fine. part of this. Didn't he come out and say he was fine? That's the report I saw yesterday. We've we had this a couple weeks ago, so he should be playing. But at least you at least need to know that it's happening. All right, we talked about DeAndre Swift. Galladay didn't practice on Thursday. Marvin Jones did return to a limited practice that makes him a little bit sketchy with the knee. I, although I imagine if he's active, you can flex him. Um, Devontae Adams, you know. Red alert here. Uh, yes. Held out of Thursday's practice. We talked about this on the Sirius show yesterday, Jason, where what's the problem? It's the conservative uh, medical staff in Green Bay. Yeah, yeah you need I mean, to be it, concerned. They, they held out Devonta Adams when it seemed like he was ready to go for a week longer than you wanted. They did the same to Aaron Jones. So if Devonta Adams is struggling with something, they want him in the playoffs more than they want him for week 11. And then uh, Joe Mixon did not practice Wednesday or Thursday. I saw somebody tweeting out that they can't wait to put Joe Mixon on their IR spot for a 18th consecutive week because apparently that's what it feels like right now with Joe Mixon. <laughs> somehow it feels like he's been out much longer than Chris Carson somehow. I don't know why that is, but uh, unlikely we see Joe Mixon on the field again. Mm -hmm. T. Higgins missed Thursday's practice due to an illness. We don't have any reason to believe he'll miss the game yet. Same with Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Uh, there are other illnesses out there, breaking news, and uh, some players are, are not COVID positive and yet still missing uh, due to flu or other, other symptoms. Uh, Corey Clement, though, is positive and on the reserve COVID-19 list. They added Jordan Howard to the practice squad. This should excite nobody. No, and I, I, I want to add a quick note here on, uh, on Calvin Ridley, wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons, because there is... I've seen differing opinions on what's going on with him. He's had, at least on Wednesday and Thursday, he had limited practice. Now the and some of the like the blurb sites are saying, well, that sounds like he's going to be good to go this weekend because he's got limited practice. Let's see what happens on Friday. But the the actual report from the Falcons website kind of lists it as he's not getting better, and so the, it's a situation that you need to be. Aware of and monitoring that uh, I'm I'm a complete 50-50 here. I don't know if Calvin Ridley is going to play or if, or if he's going to sit. Just be ready. Now, this is foot strain, right? Yeah. I mean, I it's just one of those things where I know they're different people and there's different types of foot strains, but it was like it was expected to, oh, maybe he'll get there that week one for Chris Carson and for Joe Mixon. It's, they're going to be ready. And so far for both of those guys, it's taken – more time than you expected and hoped and what the timeline originally said to get back from these foot sprains. Ridley is at two weeks right now because he missed the game and they had the bye week. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Before we jump into the fantasy forecast, want to remind everybody, look, are you playing some DFS? We know we know you people out there playing your DFS, getting your, your DraftKings on, your FanDuel on. If you want some help getting that done, check out the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast hosted by our own Kyle the Borgogan and Matthew Betts. They have been crushing it all year long. Uh, it's its an entertaining listen. They are breaking things down. The fantasy football is about DFS for the rest of us. So may, maybe you haven't. Maybe you've never tried out some DFS. Well, now is the time to do it. Thanksgiving Day is when you get in on the DFS action. In fact, the crew over there on the fantasy football is DFS pod, they're going to put out a bonus Thanksgiving Day slate podcast. Trust me, if if you've never experienced DFS, you want to take Turkey Day up a notch. Turkey Day is going to be different this year uh, than any other year. Why not take it to a whole new level by getting in on some FanDuel or some DraftKings with, uh, it, it, on Thanksgiving? And you can get your help from the guys at the, on the DFS podcast. It's everywhere you listen to podcasts, so go check it out. Fantasy Forecast. All right. I am excited. We've got the Megalodon show next Wednesday, Oof. and uh, that's always an event, right? Uh, you guys, you got you to properly Mer hydrate. <laughs> You've got to... I didn't know what that first sound was. Get some calories in there. Uh, Jason's ready to rumble. Um, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, next Tuesday, I'll be going to sleep at 7 p.m. to prepare my body. <laughs> 
Now, every year on during the Megalodon show, you eat a full uh, canned cranberry sauce on live on the show. Isn't that the whole that, that the bit? Sounds disgusting. Because oh, you don't like it? No, of course not. It's 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 a of course not. He says about a jelly. can. Oh, you are so you gross. and canned foods. Uh, I know. I love coexisted I love in a, a big way. C- call me crazy. Cranberry. I don't like canned jelly. I like my I jelly in a bottle. I do call you crazy. <laughs> cranberry sauce in a can is spectacular, and you're going to get great. some hate it, hate on this great. Twitter thread. Do you like regular cranberry sauce, like homemade with the of chunks of cranberry not. in it? I don't know if people have Bogberries. tried cranberries, but they're awful. They're just not good. <laughs> cranberry juice is only good when it has like it's half sugar. If you've ever tried real cranberry juice or cranberries, yeah, it's disgusting. Disgusting. If you've surprise. seen, yeah, I think John Oliver did a bit on yes, did. cranberries and cranberry sauce and how bad the berry is, and he quoted a like ocean spray representative <laughs> who put out yep. a who put out a letter that literally said the berry in and of itself has a like a pungent, nasty taste and an unpalatable taste. He called them bog berries. <laughs> yeah. So I. But sugar, sugar I solves all correct. things. Yeah. Okay, yesterday we covered a number of matchups, Eagles, Browns, Falcons, Saints, Bengals, uh, Washington, the Lions, Panthers, Steelers, Jags, and Titans, Ravens game. Seven more today to get into, so why not start here? The New England Patriots, 4-5, and five, taking on the Houston Texans, who are 2-7 and seven right now. Patriots, two-point road favorites, 48.5 point over under. Some signs of life uh, from the Patriots in recent weeks. And this let's start at the quarterback position, because Jason, you brought up the case for Deshaun Watson yesterday, uh, the fact that on a per-play basis, this Patriots defense is not great on a per-play basis. Now, they do limit opposing fantasy quarterbacks production-wise, but Watson is a one-play type of guy. You find Fuller, you find Cooks, you you do it twice on the course of a, an entire game, and you have a fantasy week. So, still confident with Watson? I am confident with Watson. I mean, the the reality of this game is going to be what happens with the New England Patriots run game. Uh, the Patriots want to run the ball, slow the game down. They have the slowest pace of play in the entire NFL by a wide margin. And the the reality is here, Texans have been uh, very bad on the ground. They're the second worst team over the last six weeks um, in fantasy points given up to running backs. But I actually view that almost as a good thing. I think that when these teams are given up small yardage plays over and over and over and over and over to the Patriots, the, the drives take forever. You know, if, if you're getting 15, 20 yard chunks on this Houston Texans defense, you're not going to be able to keep your, your offense on the field quite as long. And I, I do think that this game, you know, it's a 40, eight and a half point over under, which is pretty high for a Patriots game. And I, I think, I, I think it's going to hit it. All right, uh, Cam Newton. Booty scootin Cam Newton. How do nice. we feel about Cam? Is there is there more booty scooting to be had in this matchup? Are you willing to flex him out, or not flex him out, but uh, stream him this week? I uh, Cam Newton is like Cam. Cam, Cam sucks for fantasy. Play? Of course he he's sucks. in play. Of what course, about Cam is terrible, and of course he's in play. He's only had two weeks on the season where he has not been a quarterback one. He's been a top 12 quarterback every single week of the season except for two. And who out there thinks Cam's playing good ball? Anybody? That's no. why I say Cam sucks. Because Wait, oh, you don't okay. like 13 for 17 for 118 yards passing? <laughs> exactly. Uh, but You don't like the, 9 for 15 for 98 yards passing? I, I can't stand it. He's playing terrible football, but he runs the ball. He gets rushing touchdowns. You can absolutely play him in this matchup. I, 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 I mean, the only oh two my games. Oh, goodness. Do you want to? I'm sorry, Jason, to nope. cut you off, but you will be very entertained by this. I was just looking at his pace. Okay, this is his pace from week three until now. So six games played, passing pace, twenty six hundred yards passing, <laughs> five <laughs> touchdowns. Oh. He's on a five touchdown pace as a passer, and, oh. and almost and, all of those weeks a quarterback won. So stupid fantasy scoring. Is that's broken. a quarterback dumb. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. And yeah. Dumb. And. Uh, I guess we didn't really talk about this uh, here in the in the Taysom Hill part of the show. Do you guys? What's your guys' confidence level? To you're in a one quarterback league, you play Taysom Hill oh, as right. your actual starting quarterback. Like, would, like, would you, you, play, you play him over Cam? <laughs> would you play Taysom Hill or would you play Cam Newton? I, I think I would play Cam because we we know what we're getting. The matchup is good. He's been a top twelve quarterback, but Taysom is absolutely in play. 
for all of those same reasons. I said it's a Tim Tebow-led offense. Tim Tebow was really good for fantasy because he runs the ball, gets rushing touchdowns, and you would expect Taysom Hill to have 50 Taysom yards. Taysom throw better than Tebow. And maybe Cam Newton. Maybe Cam Newton, too, yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah I don't. here's the thing. Uh, if you are in a matchup where you are a heavy underdog, I am playing Taysom Hill. Because Cam Newton, while you the, the stat was accurate, Jason, these are like number 12 quarterback, number 8 quarterback, number 12 quarterback. This is uh, not a ceiling type of play when you're throwing for 120 yards and Jacoby Myers is your number one target. So uh, that's the, the philosophy I would approach it with. Um, Damian Harris, I brought up the case for him yesterday as a, a, as a great play, especially in standard leagues. Mm -hmm. The identity of this team is to run the football, and he's going to probably give you 100 on the ground against a Houston defense that is uh, porous, uh, to put it nicely against running backs um do you touch any of the other running backs though from like do you take the touchdown shot with rex burkhead or is this just damien no one else i think For you can i think you can flex rex burkhead like if you were in the situation where uh it, it he's in the same area to me as chase edmonds of of uh flexing him mean, maybe even a, a a bit of a higher touchdown probability than even chase so he's if you're in a deeper league you can play him as a flex yes Jason made a great point about Brandon Cooks yesterday, what the Patriots do to shut down your number one option. Will Fuller's last three games against the Patriots, three for 16, one for eight, three for 31. Yeah, that's Gilmore, though. I mean, he, he, Gilmore is still dealing with his knee injury. I haven't heard an update this week if if the Patriots are expecting would him to play or not. Would you just sit him if he's back? Would you just sit Will Fuller? Would you find another – like, would you play Jacoby Myers across the field who's had so many targets right. – Versus I, this historically bad Will Fuller, which, by the way, DK Metcalf, historically bad against the Cardinals. I think in three previous games, he had like three catches total. He had a nice game last night. I would still play Will Fuller. Uh, it, it's it, it's a knee injury for a superstar cornerback. So there's no, even if he's back, there's no guarantee that, that Gilmore's at 100%. Okay. And then uh, anything else from this game that you guys want to get into in terms of potential starts? Duke Johnson, uh, Duke Johnson yeah. is someone you need to talk about. Um, the Patriots, over the last six games, they've been pretty bad against the run. I think he's someone that is going to get enough volume to be you know, in, in your RB2 or your flex spot, but I, I don't expect a, a big game here. Duke Johnson saw 100% of the running back attempts for the Houston Texans last Making week. Making his output all the more depressing. <laughs> he feels like the exact same decision to start Gio Bernard. If neither of those players get into the end zone, then you are probably bummed out. Uh, Possibly. I mean, last week at Cleveland, that was it was seven to ten because of the weather. The, the weather remains undefeated. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, the Miami Dolphins at six and three take on the three and six Denver Broncos. Dolphins are three and a half point road favorites, oh. trying to go to seven and three here. Palindrome game. And you like the six and three, three and you six. You know I do. Um, I I'm trying to find the quote from Drew Locke that I had shared with you guys this morning. Oh the, yes, the uh, where, where Drew Locke was saying that uh, talking about his bad passes, where about half of them, when, as soon as it leaves his hands, he thinks, "Oh no." Yeah, that is <laughs> that, that is accurate. And he was just honest. And we say the same when it leaves his hand, we say, "Oh no" as well. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, look, what I, have I done? I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate the honesty from Drew. I mean, it's not like. The rest of the world watching things doesn't have the same thought. So, uh, but what what does that mean for passing I, options for Denver? Because Jason, I know you're staring down the Jerry Judy uh, decision I, I, each and I, every week. Yeah, I, I have been, and I could tell you right now there is not a single Denver Bronco that I'm aiming to start. If I can get Melvin no Gordon out of my out of my running back spot, out of my flex, and put him on the bench this week, I mean he's barely getting to 10 carries since Lindsay has been back uh two of the last three games he didn't uh Jerry Judy no I mean Jerry Judy's had really one good game another game where he had a, a long touchdown in the beginning of the year outside of that he's not been good I think the Dolphins are legit they've been locking down the number one option if I had to pick one player from this game I think I like Tim Patrick more than Jerry Judy but I don't want a single Bronco I I mean if either of you disagree, talk me into starting a Bronco here against a, a Dolphins defense that's been really hot. It's just Noah Fant is is the only question, and then that's because the it's tight end is rough, uh, 
and Noah Fant can no Noah Fant can take one play and make an entire tight end's worth of fantasy points. Yeah, that being said, since uh weeks one and two, he's the tight end twenty two in fantasy. So it's uh yeah. it's like a and very so soft up. secret endorsement. Yeah, it, look, I, I believe in Noah Fant's future. But right now, he is banged up. You can see it how he's playing. Every single week, he's leaving the game and coming back. It, it, he, I just can't trust him right now. Mike Gesicki or Noah Fant? That's a good one. I, uh, I'll play I'll play Gesicki in that situation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, let's see. Do I and have another not, one? Not with any sort of joy in my heart. I mean, Jared this is, Cook with Taysom Hill or Noah Fant? Look, this is my decision. League of record. I have Noah Fant and Jared Cook. Oh, I, well, then tell the people what you're doing. Travis I had Kelsey Jer- is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I had Jared Cook in the lineup with Taysom Hill making the switch. I am going to stick with Jared Cook in the lineup as of right now. Right. I don't like either. And Cook? Uh, honestly, uh, Logan Thomas is a player I'd rather play over over any of them. Um, but it's tough to actually drop a player that you believe has better upside the rest of the season for a Logan Thomas who I'm not sure I could trust week in and week out. Yeah, that that's an interesting one. I. Uh... I probably wouldn't have a problem dropping those guys to pick up Logan Thomas if you need to win this week. Kind of the, hey, one week at a time situation. But um, the other side of the ball, Tua, I don't think he's a real great fantasy option. Agreed. I, I'm looking at Salvin Ahmed, and I'm saying, well, he may have a good opportunity. I don't know how much work Matt Breida will get. I know that it wasn't their choice to play him when he was healthy, and they had Miles Gaskin. They really like running a single back that can do a lot. Ironically, Ahmed and 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 Gaskin were were teammates. They're similar body sizes. They both have the same type of production. I don't have myself I'm not super afraid of starting Ahmed because Brita had a full practice. Uh, do you guys disagree with me there? If Brita's active, I don't want to start start Ahmed. Really? I, I I'm gonna i I'm on this I'm kind of in between the two of you. I would still start Ahmed if I had him. It's like he's my flex or my running back three, that type of an area. But I disagree that I am nervous about the start that Matt Burita could. Matt Burita might be the guy. I mean, as soon as uh, as soon as Gaskin, the the injury was announced that he was going to miss you know three or or more weeks, they poured the confidence onto Matt Burita. Unfortunately, Matt Burita just got hurt right away. So I, it's. Maybe they stick with the hot hand of Ahmed. Well, and Ahmed but, was very I mean, productive. I mean, he was the RB12 yes. last week. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's similar to what you saw in Seattle, right? I mean, the, the backup to Chris Carson was going to be Carlos Hyde, but he got injured at the same time. And so they had DJ Dallas come in. He was, uh, he was productive. Alex Collins was productive. But once Carlos Hyde was back, they're like, there was a reason he was running ahead of them to begin with. And I think that, sure, you know, Matt Breida was running ahead of Ahmed to begin he with. Was, so it, it's, he was it, running ahead of Miles Gaskin, just for context. I like, I'd water bet you Ahmed versus Breida. That's for sure. If they're both active. Yeah. And, and I would side the Ahmed side. It's just the, do you have the confidence that he's going to put up 21 carries uh, for this week? If Breida is there. Uh, producer Borland, please hit that water bet button. What? Wow. I don't know if we have it. Water bet. Oh there we my go. goodness! If you just Burita, bet on Matt Burita. If Burita is active, I I do think he would run ahead of Ackman. I was expecting you to condition it like if Burita is active, is the starter, and has more fancy points, I will take him <laughs> in this bet. If you would agree, I would take that bet. I know you would. All right, Devontae Parker. We don't have confidence in his production, but like, let me let me ask you, Devontae Parker, or. Robbie Anderson without Teddy Bridgewater. Robbie Ooh. Anderson. Yeah, I got to go Robbie. I mean, since What about Tua Jacoby has... Myers or Devontae Parker? Jacoby. Yeah, that all t- well, yeah, I'll go Jacoby there. Okay. All right. New York Jets, uh they are still winless, 0 and 9. The Los Angeles Chargers, 2 and 7. Chargers are 9 and a half point home favorites. It's a 46 point over under. And uh, here's a shocking stat. The Chargers, two and seven, all seven losses by one score. So is that a brutal? Is that a way of saying, look, uh, Anthony Lynn is a great head coach. Everything is competitive. He's managed to work through quarterback issues and, and injuries. Or is this a way to say, uh, Anthony Lynn's a poor coach. He can't manage close games and his team can't execute at it, the end. Or, or is it's it too, no blame? 
No, it's two years in a row of of a lot of this, and I think it I think it is the problem of the head coach. You've got in game mismanagement. You've got time clock issues on an almost weekly basis, and you know I I I I definitely blame Anthony Lynn. I like the dude a lot. Watching Hard Knocks I was like, this dude's awesome. I'm not convinced he's a great head coach. Um, I, I mean, he hasn't shown anything in real games um, to make me believe that. Okay, and and I know you're right because I like him so much. So I, historically <laughs> you, speaking, you. Gus, Gus Edwards uh, didn't work out for me, who is also a part of this staff. Have we have we thought about it? Could be Gus's problem. Yeah, Hugh Jackson. It all comes back to Gus. <laughs> Shocked you don't love Gase. Oh, stop it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I had any like single one liner to defend Adam Gase, if that existed, I would have just said it there to be funny. But none of that exists. Yeah. No. Uh, Justin Herbert. Uh, yeah. Please play him. What in about without the hair? I know. In spite of the haircut, he may not get a date to the dance, but he's he's going to get a date on my fantasy roster. Herbs, your hair was legit. Like that was elite hair. You're not talking but about his facial hair, right? No, no. Look, he's he's still a bitty baby boy. He's got to grow into his beard. When I was his age, I, I there was no follicles growing out. Of my cheeks. Is he 14? So, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the picture mashup of him and young Anakin Skywalker, the little boy. Oh, my but goodness. It looks very similar. Uh, uh, but, yes, yeah. you are you are right. He's uh, Herbert, one of the, the shining spots of this NFL season. Looks like he's about to uh, become uh, one of those top-tier quarterbacks for the future. It's going to be Joe Flacco on the other side of uh, the football, and that's a good thing for the downfield options in New York. Sam Darnold, you can blame Adam Gaze all you want. Maybe Adam Gaze made the man here, but he has got uh, Sam Darnold's got problems in terms of you know hanging out in the pocket, looking downfield, gets skittish, runs too frequently. So Flacco last week, he provided fantasy value to uh, Denzel Mims had targets. Brashad Perryman had two touchdowns and Jamison Crowder scored. So there is some opportunity for Perryman, I think, as the main potential flex here in this matchup. I'm willing to do it. Like, uh, are you guys on the same page? Uh, I'm personally not just because I, I totally agree with everything you're saying. The opportunity is there for Perryman. Uh, this Chargers defense looks great, and you could you could have a, a lot of points scored here for the Jets. But at the same time, it's they're all healthy now. Crowder is out there. Perriman is out there. Denzel Mims is getting more and more involved in the offense now that he's back from his injury. I don't think all three guys are going to have a, a good game. And while Perriman was the beneficiary last time we saw Joe Flacco throwing it downfield, I don't I don't think that's prescriptive to necessarily mean that's a guarantee. And relying on a Jets player is hard i like i like perryman because he's shown the downfield propensity for for years now so i i'm okay with it um i look to the other side of the ball though i'd whoa, rather be oh you gotta talk about my boy lamichael p ryan man he, they well, i was to... looking at the other wide receivers mike See, oh, I, was do, I, I was doing a little I bit apologize. of a wide receiver dance there i, Mo- I apologize uh, uh continue to host well <laughs> <laughs> Keenan Allen, yeah, but Mike Williams was my question to you guys. He's had a couple monster games, but then uh, he's been outside the top 36 in the rest of them. So I was going to actually throw the Perryman Mike Williams question to you, Mike, because it it seems on the mm. surface that Mike Williams is the right play, but but from uh, you know I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. That might be another one I'm willing to bet my, uh, Jason in his crazy face. Oh, Jeremy, you put that on the board. What? Water bet. I don't Did know I what get, the bet oh, is. It's Perryman versus Mike Williams. Wait, you want Perryman? No, I do. I do Andy want does. Perryman. Yeah. Oh, I'll take. I'm. I'm not in on the bet, but I will take Mike Williams. I get it. That, uh, you know, two weeks ago against Las Vegas, he was the wide receiver, thirty-seven. He was five for eighty-one. Yeah, he you had a would, great game. You would take that uh, every day of the week. I'm going to go between the two of them. Give me Mike Williams. I'll take the better quarterback and the better offense and All the better right, matchup. So, uh, yeah. Sure, sure. That makes sense. Um, LaMichael Pirine, you're going to be wrong, but that makes sense. Uh, LaMichael Pirine <laughs> and Kalen Balage are the fantasy options in this game. Now, Balage 40 touches over the last two weeks. Nothing in this backfield has really changed. Joshua Kelly has not 
become any more elusive. Uh, Justin Jackson's on IR. Austin Eckler not available. Uh, Trumaine Pope wasn't involved last week. So Balazs, to me, is a yep. is a smash play. This smash weekend. play. I, lo- I love Kalen Balazs this week, and this is a perfect example. We, we were talking about this on our Sirius XM show, we, we, and we talk about it in preseason all the time, staying water. I have hated Kalen Balazs for the entirety of his career career up until he was a charger never believed in his situation or his talent what you've seen in the last two games says blush blush should be in your lineup i mean 40 touches in the last two weeks and a great matchup and nothing changed around him i i really i will play blush if i've got him there's no part of me that has ever wanted to add to my fantasy football resume the fact that i traded for kalen blush but it's now part of my resume because of this week's matchup lamichael p ryan Reports out of New York is that he's going to see a bigger workload. However, Adam Gaze did highlight the fact that Frank Gore has been the best player on his team, which then <laughs> highlights the fact that his team is 0-9. So, Pirine with the hype of a uh, greater opportunity, we must remember, my friends, a great opportunity on the Jets is not the same thing as a great opportunity elsewhere. I am tempering expectations, but I do believe that he is somebody to monitor and should certainly be rostered. Yeah, he he feels like uh you you pick him up, you stash him right now it, because th- this is a great matchup against the Chargers. They are twenty seventh against fantasy running backs the past six weeks. It has been a, a matchup you generally can exploit. So yeah, I don't think I have the confidence to play the Michael P Ryan this week, but pick him up and see what they do with him. My uh my buzzer went off. We we cannot talk about the Jets, the Jets anymore yeah. on All this right. show, right. or we violate advertising contracts. So. Uh, the Green Bay Packers at seven and two take on the six and three Indianapolis Colts. I'm excited for this game. Mm-hmm. The Colts are favored, and I think they win the ball game. Uh, I'm picking them in all of our like office picks pools. I think the Colts are going to win this one. The Packers are a a, a bewildering team in some ways. Uh, obviously, Aaron Rodgers has been incredible this season. Uh, we do have question marks around Devonte Adams, around Alan Lazard's availability, and the Packers have just like someone's flipped a switch off for them at times this year, the Tampa Bay game. Um, they've had to come back. I mean, they were, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars were, were staying competitive. It's weird. I think they're a great team, but I think the Colts are a great team too. So that's where I lean. How do you guys see this one playing out with the question marks around Devonte Adams? Yeah. I mean, that, that is the, the, the differentiator to me as to how this game plays out without Devonte Adams. I would certainly take the Colts in this one because I don't think MVS and a limited Lazard is going to be enough to uh, m- you know, move the ball on a great Colts defense. But if Devontae Adams is there, I mean, the, the Packers, one, one thing that I've seen from the Packers is that they, they absolutely love to have the chip on the shoulder. They love to be disrespected. They love to be the underdog. Um, and if they've got Devonte Adams and Aaron Jones ready for this game, I, I would take the Packers um, in, in this game on the road against a good Colts team because uh, because they're underdogs. All right, Green Bay's dead last in pace of play. The Colts are twenty second, so there is some you know with the defenses being uh, pretty formidable here. You know, yesterday we were looking in our league of record at you know fantasy points produced by the the defense. And uh, I've been able to ride the Steelers all year long. Well, the Colts are number one. The Steelers are mm-hmm. number two. The Colts defense is consistently producing week after week, which is going to take a little bit of the top off of the uh, the Packers upside here. Um, and if you don't have Devontae Adams, I don't know if I have confidence. Like, are you going to bump up Robert Tanyan and, and play him this week, you know, with Adams off the field? Are you going to play Jamal Williams? Other than Aaron Jones, where are you making moves in this offense without Devontae Adams? If it, Adams would be, it would be Robert uh, Tunyon for me. Tons of fun. I, I, we, we saw him come through where in those couple games with Devontae Adams out. and So like he's at least proven himself to Aaron Rodgers as a capable guy when he needs to be called upon. He just hasn't had to be called upon the last couple of weeks. So the, I, I would bump him up back into that tight end one conversation. Yeah, and, and I think the biggest question that, that other people will have is MVS, whether or not with Devontae Adams out, M- MVS last Marquez two games. Voldemort. <laughs> Mar- Marquez Voldemort, Scantling, um, whether or not they could start him. I, I would not be starting him. He against, who shall not be started. 
Yes, yeah. he who shall not be started. I, I wouldn't. I, he is not a one. If he goes into that role and the defense is focusing on him, he might have eight or nine targets, but he'll end up with like forty-four yards on four receptions. So I, I I'm going to avoid MVS. He how does about, tend oh, to fold ahead. when the pressure's on. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Let's say, how about uh, Michael Pittman, uh, the Colts rookie wide receiver who looks great? Looks like a potential breakout is coming for him over the second half of the season. However. Jair Alexander, Green Bay Packers shutdown corner, is back at practice from uh, he was dealing with a concussion problem. We don't know for sure that he's going to play, but if he's back at practice right now, you would you would Jason, expect him you, to play. Aren't you happy that he's recovered from his injury and he's back at practice? I saw you make a face it's, that said otherwise. A, you know, it's a it's a head injury. I think you really need to take some time here, Jair, okay. and uh, make sure you know, you know for health. your long term health. Uh, specifically because I have Pittman and I would like to play him. If Jair <laughs> Alexander is uh, out there, that makes it much, much more difficult. The question is, I, I know we, we've we made the transition officially and, and for sure that Pittman is the wide receiver one for fantasy purposes. But would Jair Alexander be on Pittman or would he still be on T.Y. Hilton, uh, you know, on the other side of the ball? Oh, he'll, he'll, be on, he'll, be on, he'll be on Hilton, in my opinion, for sure. Mm. Pittman's involvement in this offense, I don't have confidence in starting him because this is a pretty formidable wide receiver defense to begin with. And Pittman's got one good game in the National Football League. And, and there was some uh, gadgetry to his production last week. I, I'm not going to anoint him because if I know one thing about Phillip Rivers is he's fairly target agnostic here. He is not locking in on one guy. It can be Pascal. It can be Doyle. It can be Burton. It can be uh, Hines, for all we know. So I don't look at Pittman and say, man, this guy's demanding all the targets in the offense. I think we saw a good game from him, and I'm not willing to start him here. How about the running backs for the Colts? What do you do with uh, Hines, who now his uh, NBA Jam rules say that he is heating up? We know the matchup is great on the season. The Packers are 31st against fantasy running backs. They allow rushing yards. Is, is Hines in the flex? Are you... What do you do with Johnny Taylor, the the chosen one from the draft? Are you playing any of these guys if you can help it? Uh, I think Hines would be the person you'd put in, not only because of the hot hand, but because he's the only one with some sort of baseline with uh, you know the receptions. You know, since that weird week two where he only had one target, you know he's getting four point six targets a game from that point on. And the the matchup says that you could play him for an upside. It's it's risky business though because the hot hand approach is is legit. If Jonathan Taylor comes out and looks good, they'll keep giving them the ball. If if Jordan Wilkins comes out and does that, which he won't, they would keep giving him the ball. So I I have a I have I a like hard you time. definitively say John that that Jordan Wilkins will not and like and the but Jonathan Taylor could, although yes. I don't think we have seen Jonathan Taylor this entire season come out and look like he has the hot hand and Jordan Wilkins did have a 20 for 89 hot hand game three weeks ago where he finished as the running back six yes the, there there has been one time in his career um and it was a few weeks that's ago that's more than zero that's well I mean look Jonathan Taylor y you look at the beginning of the year he was extraordinarily relevant for yes for uh, fantasy for fantasy yes. so but the mittens he wasn't wearing mittens at all so <laughs> yeah need need to get him some mittens the Dallas Cowboys at two and seven take on the Minnesota Vikings at four and five. Vikings playing some better football of late. Mike's shaking his head. The Vikings I, are seven point favorites, forty eight no, no, point no. over under. I, I'm sorry, I'm shaking my head uh, my head at the fact that the Dallas Cowboys are two and seven. We yeah. are heading into week ten. The divisional leaders are three, five, and one, meaning the Dallas Cowboys are at two and seven are not out of the playoff race. Is oh ridiculous. yeah, yeah. There you oh, go. There's okay. there's a uh, Judge Giamatti with his Cowboys fandom. How in, proud would you be if you made the playoffs with a with a record like that? Not very. In, <laughs> they are in the contention for either a top five pick or a playoff spot, a home field playoff game. <laughs> yeah, at Welcome least to, this year, it's 2020. Yeah, at least this year, uh, home okay. field doesn't doesn't matter quite the same as it usually does without the fans there. So if if you know if the NFC East has to host a game, at least it'll be hopefully fanless. Let me let me run something by you here. You see how it lands. Andy Dalton, Super Bowl MVP. How's that sound? Mm, that sounds get, awesome. Get to the playoffs. Make it happen. 
Some men just want to watch the world burn, and I would love that. That would be Andy Dalton Super Bowl MVP is how the 2020 season should be culminated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, as of right now, the, I don't think they get by the Minnesota Vikings. So two and eight is in their future. The Vikings are playing very good football right now. Yeah. Uh, they're battling back to 500 uh, in this game. Dallas has lost four in a row. They are coming off the bye week, and they get Andy Dalton back. Dalton went through it, man. He had uh, a concussion, and he had COVID. And uh, he said he's still dealing with the the uh, the recovery from COVID. So I mean, you better pay attention to that. I don't I don't know if it's locked and loaded that Dalton's going to start. Yeah, I th- I think he will based on the comments I heard him uh, talking about feeling good, but. You're right, uh, and and it might not matter. I mean, is there any situation where me confirming that Andy Dalton is in the in the game is going to transition all of your starts and sits for the Dallas side of the football? Yeah, uh, I think it actually does because one of them. Yeah. yeah, one of them, and it's Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper was you know he was he was relevant. He wasn't great, but he was relevant when Andy Dalton was there. He was the clear number one target in the offense, which is what you want. Some kind of indication that that he will be the guy, you know, when the third string and fourth string quarterbacks came in behind Dalton, it was just whoever I can find first and and get the ball out of my hands. Um, And there was no clarity. So I don't know that you can really start uh, Gallup or CeeDee Lamb with confidence, but if Andy Dalton is there, I would still be starting Amari Cooper. Okay, uh, Thielen and Jefferson should both be started without yep. question. Uh, Jefferson has been been on fire lately. Thielen always a touchdown threat. Had a couple last week, and <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> we're bringing it back today. Yes, sir, I love it. Uh, yeah, Adam Thielen, he's uh, our wide receiver nine on the week against the Dallas secondary. We'll see if they can get things patched up a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, we've seen several teams do that in the second half, you know, Minnesota being one of them, right? Minnesota has been a better uh, defense in terms of pressuring the quarterback, in terms of making plays in the uh, last few weeks than they had been before. Dalvin Cook, you play every week, but Ezekiel Elliott over the last month, 68 yards. That's what he's averaging per game total, not just Whoa. on the ground with no <laughs> touchdowns. So um, how do you, how far down do you move him? In the start said decisions, Jason made the point. You got to stay water, right? You cannot be loyal to names and former production and hope to make the playoffs in fantasy I've, football. You have to be I've loyal to the week. I've I've got the the the, the inner oh, out I, question. I, I'm I know the name. I think. Do Go you? Ahead. I think. You, I, is it Kalen Balage? It's Kalen Balage. I knew <laughs> it. I could feel it. Uh, I'm playing Kalen Balage. I am playing Kalen Balage. Oh no! And we're now on the record. We Same just we put that book. out in the delete, delete. <laughs> yeah, I, I abstain. I abstain. Dal- Dalton does. Uh, you abstain? <laughs> yeah. It, Dalton would help me a little bit with the. Z we can't run for office anymore, Andy. Right. They'll pull this up out of the archives and said, "This man, I can hear the ads already." Yeah. I mean, Ezekiel he Elliott once is. Said that Kalen Balage. <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott now is James Conner, Kenyon Drake. It, it, the volume is there. Uh, that's that's a fair comp do, do, you know and you're you're gonna start them more often than you're not and you're hoping for a touchdown or or something like that that's what zeke is now and and those are serviceable necessary quality pieces for a fantasy roster they're not the piece that puts you over the top to the championship like a dalvin cook or like usually a, a ezekiel elliott but that's the the mold that i've got him in now is just a volume play that you're going to start most weeks that's going to finish somewhere in the rb2 range All right, one more question from the game, Mike. I'm going to put you on the spot. Matthew Stafford with the question marks and yet upside, or Kirk Cousins in this game against the Dallas defense with the weapons he has? Okay. Yeah, it's Kirk Cousins for me. And I just want to – look, in in a world where – in this tight end world, world, uh, it's gross, but Dalton Schultz has to at least be in the conversation over the last three weeks. The dude's averaging about 19% of Dallas' targets. So I don't he, think he has to be in the conversation. You can't make me put him so in the either. conversation, He's Mike. in the conversation. He's not in the conversation. He is. Okay. I mean... He, he look, He's in the conversation. The last six weeks, the Vikings are allow, allowing 11 points to the tight end position, which is 24th. Dalton Schultz seeing 19% of the targets. You can you can grimace yeah, but, and smirk, but that, or, that's what no, we saw. I'm, I'm nodding. I'm when sadly he's... nodding, Mike. Okay. I'm not, I got I'm one of you. Okay. I'm you, sad nodding. He got eight targets two weeks ago. He got seven targets last week. I, I love that. 
But those were with the other quarterbacks. You know, th that's not when Andy Dalton was playing yeah, four targets the week prior. And I mean, I've it, been converted. I've been converted. Okay, he's the number. He was the number ten tight end two weeks <laughs> ago. Yes, with a totally different quarterback. Well, I, it totally doesn't matter. I mean, he's he's the only he's running ninety five percent of snaps, and I think that they're going to blitz the socks off Andy Dalton. So you're I'm going to play Janu against Baltimore. Or are you going to play Dalton Schultz? John. Yeah, I'll play Dalton Schultz. I'll play Dalton Schultz. Oh, baby. Let's Give do, a, Logan third. Thomas Let's do a third one. Third bet, Jay. Let's go. Nope. Three nope. bets. Nope. Nope. Yes. Water bet. Yes. I did it's not accept late. that. You the, the audio drops that uh, you okay, did. Okay. I accept that with Logan Thomas. Let's Wait, you were on. so demonstrative against Dalton Schultz, and you're that, not but taking the But that doesn't mean I'm pro Janu. <laughs> Being against one person doesn't mean, oh, so that you means are, you. You're withdrawing from the, the trinity of water bets. You you love Caleb Malaj, so you must no, hate No, I just want to hear you say, I withdraw from the water bet. <laughs> I withdraw from the water bet. Okay, there you go. Wow, the what Kansas a City Chiefs at 8-1 and one take on the Los Angeles, or I'm sorry, the Las Vegas Raiders at 6-3. and three. Chiefs are eight-point favorites. It's a 56.5-point over-under. If we remember, this was a great fantasy game back in week five las vegas won it 40 to 32 and uh this is it's going to be interesting i'm looking forward to this game divisional matchup the the raiders seem to show up against the chiefs but do, do, are they going to show up in your lineup is my question are you willing to go out there and put in send in the car when he had such a big game against the chiefs last time send in the car mm. send in the car I would prefer not to. Like Kirk Cousins, I would play him over uh, Derek Carr. <sighs> Carson Wentz against Cleveland, especially with the news of uh, uh, Miles Garrett going on the COVID list, I would play Carson Wentz over Derek Carr. I, I think Kansas City is going to boat race the Raiders here. I think they were embarrassed and angry at their last matchup. And when you say that the Raiders show up, they did this year, but that's not like the common thread. You you look at last year with Derek Carr and and Gruden and this this same team. You know when the Raiders faced the Chiefs, they put up ten points and nine points. Coming off that loss from a couple weeks ago, I I don't expect much from the Raiders. I I think the Chiefs are going to be jacked up for this game. Interesting. Okay, it is a nice over under fifty six and a half points implied point total for the Raiders at twenty four point three. Josh Jacobs is in your lineup. He's the RB5 in fantasy points, RB7 in points per game. Darren Waller, you play him every week because mm -hmm. he is like... Uh, he's the walrus. He, he's the walrus. But Ruggs and Aguilar are merely dart throws at this point where you hope for one big play. And if you don't get a big play from either of those guys, you don't get anything from them. I mean, that is the the recipe uh, for Aguilar and Rugs they are desperation deep league dart throws am i am i wrong no you're not wrong you are right uh Clyde Edwards Alaire let's hypothesize here he missed the Thursday practice um i don't know if our producers have any more practice reports for us or information nothing on, yet on Clyde okay nothing but if for some reason he missed this game it would represent a pretty big opportunity for somebody else no is that lev bell is that daryl williams i know that's probably williams, lev daryl williams also missed thursday's practice with uh, an illness i don't know i you would pre presume that he, him and clyde have the the same thing so if if daryl had not missed i would say daryl but he, he that would bump lev up i don't know what that turns into though you put you could play lev bell at your own uh own demise yeah, if if i mean if yeah, thank you. <laughs> if Clyde is gone, I think Lev is someone you could plug in as a, as a volume play on a team that's projected to win a lot. But he he, he does look mostly washed. I, there was the whole question to begin the year: Is Lev washed or is it the Jets? And th you can't answer that question any better than saying, "Well, let's put him on the Chiefs, see how he does." <laughs> I think I think he's uh, his his days are done. But the, we've seen this already. The Chiefs don't need to run the ball. Um, right. you know, if, if, if Clyde is not there, then you might see Patrick Mahomes throwing it a ton and that would put maybe even a Sammy Watkins at play. Obviously you're starting Tyree kill. You're starting Travis Kelsey. And I know when I bring up Sammy Watkins, it's scary. usually frightening. Yeah. It's very scary. The lizard yeah. people are not easy to look at. Yeah. It, it, it's tough. I, I, I agree with you though. My first thought when Clyde went down was not, who do I want to start in the backfield other than him? It was, Oh my, Patrick Mahomes is just going to pass the ball more because 
He can. And Kelsey and Mahomes are every week auto starts for the rest of their natural lives. Mm -hmm. But there is opportunity. I mean, the, the, the Raiders defense gives up a ton of points to fantasy wide receivers. So beyond Hill, somebody will be productive in this offense. And the one thing I will I will add, and I believe this to be the case, but illness is a little bit different this year. Um, in the past, people have played through illness. They've 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 gone through a game with the flu, and even if they're testing, um, you know, if they're testing negative for COVID, I'm pretty sure that if on game day you have COVID symptoms, you are not allowed to participate mm. uh, in the game. I I think that's the rule. So it. it you know, usually when you see oh someone missed a practice with illness, you just assume they will be back. It's illness. At least on this, you got to monitor and, and and pay attention Sunday morning. Monday night football: the Los Angeles Rams at six and three against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, sitting at seven and three right now. Buccaneers four point home favorites, forty eight point over under. Yeah, uh, we know that the Rams just lost Andrew Whitworth to their uh, on their offensive line, which I think is even going to compound some of this twelve personnel we're seeing. I have. Uh, I don't know, Mike, if you had tuned into the serious show yesterday and heard me talk about Tyler Higby. You know, I was very, very uh, sour on H Higby coming into the season, believing that we'd see the three wide receiver sets and mm -hmm. and that he wouldn't be productive. I am feeling the second half breakout on the way from now. It could be Everett just as much as it is Higby. I'm not necessarily loyal to Higby, but I did like the downfield throws I saw last week and they're running more 12 personnel that's why Reynolds is getting so many snaps that's probably something they're going to have to do to continue to have that run identity as an offense without Andrew Whitworth with with the struggles that they've had at offensive line at times so you know all that to say you know you talk about dart throw Dalton Schultz I'd play Higby over Dalton Schultz in that case I think Higby right. could have a, a productive week but offensively I want to hear you guys break down the the wide receivers for Los Angeles because it's been a little bit disappointing of late. Uh, snap counts going down for Cup, Reynolds getting targeted. Put them in order for me. How how do you evaluate them in this matchup against Tampa Bay, who's who's a formidable defense? I I, I would go Woods, Cup, Reynolds, but I think Cup has certainly lost uh, a tier. Uh, you know, in, in in what we've seen going to 12 personnel, what we saw at the second half of last year. And Cup was still good the second half of last year, but the snap percentage went down. The utilization of 12 personnel came up more. Uh, and touchdown it was very dependency. touchdown dependent last season. So uh, maybe that does open up the touchdown opportunities for Cup, but I would rather, you know, touchdowns are the least sticky stat. So um, I think Woods is pretty much still an auto start every week. And then you've got to just look at the matchup for uh, Cup and Reynolds. I've been really high on Reynolds lately. I picked him up this last week. Was happy with you know what he did, but this isn't the matchup for him. Uh, you know the the Rams are just outstanding. They're number one on the season against wide receivers as far as points given up. They're also number one in the last six weeks. They've just been doing it. Well, he the doesn't whole have to year. play against his own defense. Yeah, I got right? really he, he has to play there. against Tampa Bay. Oh, that is great news. <laughs> I I got mixed around there. Um, you are wow. right about the Rams, and that has implications for Godwin Evans and Brown. Uh, and Buc the Buccaneers are tenth against the opposing fantasy wide receivers, so it's still a tough matchup. I've got him on. But do you my... have the same opinion, knowing that he doesn't have to play himself? <laughs> so I've got Reynolds on my roster Look, right he, now. When Jalen Ramsey shuts down Josh yeah, Reynolds. It's going to be crying to me. It's going to be embarrassing. Crying to me. <laughs> Look, so here's here's the situation. I have the worst three wide receivers to choose from in, in my league of record, one of which is Josh Reynolds. You want and us to help I, you out? I, please do. Um, I hate the matchup this week when I looked into it, um, and that is against Tampa Bay, not against his own Rams defense. But knowing that I hate the matchup, I looked at the Rams defense, got confused there. But I, I don't like, you know, Josh Reynolds, he's getting the targets, but I, I don't think I could trust him in this. And so let me let me give you, um, my my roster, and you can, you two can uh, set my lineup here. Let's do Jerry it. Jerry Judy, Josh Reynolds, or Michael Pittman Jr. Mm. Waiver wire. I would go. The waiver wire is not going to have a better option than that. Uh, I would go with Josh Reynolds. And the if I have to order the Rams wide receivers, I probably still go Woods, Cup, Reynolds. But I mean, you sh you guys were talking about the snaps. Cooper Cup was on the field barely over half of the snaps, fifty three percent of the snaps. He's dealing with that wrist injury. It's I, it's I don't even the, think it's that. I, I really don't. I do. I, like McVeigh acknowledged that that uh, 
Cooper is 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 a bit banged up, and you could see it when you're watching the game. You could see him shaking it out, flexing it. It's bothering him. Yeah, and and another part of it is just run blocking. I mean, they they said they pull Cooper Cup off the field to run block in twelve personnel, and that's part of the snap count issue. So if you combine <laughs> that, he's not going to block with a a bum wrist, so right? The wrist to, yeah. and the blocking. So on the other side of the ball, I don't know if you know this. The the Rams uh, have been great against wide receivers. <laughs> uh, they're number one on the season, number one over the last six weeks. So when it comes to the actual wide receivers playing against that team, Godwin Evans, Antonio Brown, it makes it really murky. How do you? I'm playing them all. Really, I'm playing them all. I this love is, it. Uh, I, I'm bet very on Brady. Com- I'm confident Brady and the Buccaneers and what this offense is doing to the point where I'm not running away from any of those three options. If I did have to order them, I'm putting Evans at the bottom of the list. Uh, because he has a tendency to disappear, and he's going to get Jalen Ramsey on the outside situation. Mm-hmm. I think um, I would put Godwin and Brown both ahead of him. But you know, look, Vegas has them as four point favorites. It's twenty six points need to get up on the board, and uh, I'm not I'm not running away from this matchup. It's one of the reasons why I agree with Mike. I think I would play Josh Reynolds if I was you, because I think that this is going to be a game that. That uh that hits the over. I think we're gonna see a good Monday night football matchup. And that's why I'm I'm still willing to play Brady, you know, uh, coming off of last week as well. No. Now I'm not, but I was <laughs> before before <laughs> Al Borland hit that button. Um and Gronkowski. Gronkowski is somebody you have to play at the tight end position because come on. We're talking is- about Dalton Schultz and we're we're having to talk about players like Dalton Schultz at tight end. Yeah, I mean, is Gronk right now the tight end three? I mean, is he? It's Probably. a Hawkinson and Gronk right now. I mean, I'd once you're rather play Gronk than Hawkinson. Yeah. So Weird. yeah, he is. You'd rather play Gronk than Hawkinson? I would. I would. I would not. I would rather play Hawkinson. Yeah, I mean, I maybe this it. week. Shane, I'm, I'm talking holistically here. Maybe this week is different because everybody's banged okay. up for okay, sure. for Detroit. But like rest of season, who would you rather have, Gronk or Hawkinson? Uh, that one's tough. I I might okay. lean Hawkinson still. I, but I go I get Hawkinson it. there. Yeah, but but uh, this week Gronk does project good. I mean, the Rams. If you look at where they give up fantasy points, it's not to the quarterback, running back, or wide receiver. It is to tight end. Superman projects good. All right, Daryl Henderson <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Malcolm Brown. I mean, it's Henderson and no one else at the running back position for the Rams, and Ronald Jones and no uh, one else at the running back position for the for the Buccaneers. I would not. <laughs> No, not for me. Uh, I mean, you look at the the snaps and the touches are very even for Daryl Henderson and the rest of the crew. And uh, so you're settling into no one else, yeah. not a Daryl Henderson. Yeah, that, on that's the how side. that's how I feel about it. it. If I have to play one, I'm going to play Daryl Henderson because he at least feels like the starter. Even though Malcolm Brown saw the most snaps of the the trio last week, and Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette. Yes, I w- I would play Jones ahead of uh of Leonard Fournette but there, I think there's a world where Fournette gets more involved this week Ronald Jones uh I brought him up on the Sirius XM show yesterday I think he's been underrated this is a player that's been producing more consistently than we think of yeah, late it, he's yes. had two top five performances not just the one big week uh it, it, it's a player that you got to put out there and you hope that Arians has seen the light you don't bet any of your money that he's seen the light correct but you hope he has that's fair. So let's uh, let's get into our final segment. Prop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. All right. It's time for our favorite week 11 props on Monkey Knife Fight. We do this every week. And uh, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is in terms of the DJ Chark conversation yesterday. Are you shocked at this, Jason? Is that your face? It, 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 shocked, no, but surprised, yes, I, and sad more than anything, because there's there's something in me that just likes Chark this week. But I I get it. I get and, it. and this is a uh, look. DJ Chark is a big play type of player, so one play could ruin my prediction here. But DJ Chark, I'm taking fewer than fifty five point five yards. <laughs> uh, he's been basically fifty fifty on that number over the course of the year, but this is not a DJ Chark take this is a jake luton take you mix an inexperienced two-start rookie with the steelers defense and you get james robinson as your offensive strategy you don't get 
Jake Luton as your strategy. He was 18 for 35 last week for 169 passing yards against the Packers. He's going to be the problem for DJ Chark. He may take his shot, but if he misses that one shot, you could see an evaporation of fantasy value for DJ Chark. That's my bet. It's a loot and free zone, mm -hmm. and uh, that means no DJ Chark over 55 yards. I, I completely agree he needs a deep shot to hit it. I see him getting a deep shot this week, but it, without it, uh, I mean, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be in Luton's face quite often. Um, I'm going to go oh, with the I guy love we, this, Jay. we've talked about quite a bit, and I think this is you know, one of those great spots where I'm I'm super confident. It's Kalen Balazs, more than 54 and a half rushing yards, meaning he only needs 55 rushing yards. 55! <laughs> there it is. Um, and, and look, I mean, w since he's been the quote unquote starter the last two weeks, he's smashed 55 uh, rushing yards. So this week against the Jets, they're not the ones to hold them back. Um, I, and it's, and it's a revenge game. Take it on Adam Gase. So yeah, give me, give me Caleb Balazs is something I said out loud. <laughs> yeah. Now you can't too. run for office. Now you can't run for office. All right, Mike, what do you got? I'm going with Cam Newton. I like his prop of 210 and a half passing yards and I will take the less Cam Newton has passed for more than the 210 yards twice while being under 200 passing yards, seven times i get it that the matchup against houston texans it could lure you into that this is one of those weeks that cam newton is going to pass a little bit more but i will err on the side of history of this season and say cam newton will not throw more than 210 passing yards. mercy when you see 210 and you go less <laughs> Is that, I, I mean, know it when I saw 210, I was terrified you were going to say more because I was oh, going to no. be, <laughs> I was so scared. And the thing is, is here's another way to ask the question. Will Jacoby Myers have 210 receiving yards? That's yeah. Well, because no, you can say like 190 and will Burkhead have 20. Okay. Thank you. James White, it will have four. And yeah, no, I, I, uh, I agree you'd, with you, Mike. You'd assume that it's like, I'm taking less than 210. On Ben DiNucci, <laughs> like this is Cam Newton, but I I completely agree. I would I would take less too. All right, make sure you check out Monkey Knife Fight this week. Uh, you can do so by going to BallersPicks.com and use the code Ballers. You get a hundred percent deposit match. You can participate in tons of more or less games on their system, uh, but you get a hundred percent deposit match up to fifty dollars on Monkey Knife Fight by going to BallersPicks.com and using that code. Ballers, and you can Ballers. participate with us each and every week. It's a lot of fun. This is a style of game that we really enjoy, which is the more or less the prop type Go of situation. Play. Go play, man. Ballers Picks. Ballerspicks.com. That will do it. An extra long episode for you today. A mini Ooh, You're welcome. When you have to talk about Kalen Balaj, it goes it. a little long. It does. So uh, stay enjoy safe. Enjoy the everybody. weekend. I'll see you on Sunday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.